It's just been fun to discover all this talent all around the country and around the world. You know, the boundaries are not just the United States and Canada, Mexico, Brazil, uh, New Zealand, Australia, all throughout Africa, people is just, I mean, there's so much music out here. It's like, if you take, I don't want to hear 50 Cent no more. Like, you can keep that, that's yours, you know, keep the whole thing. You know, I'll go find, there's, there's a 50 Cent in Mombasa, there's a 50 Cent in Kenya, there's a 50 Cent, and, 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 and many of them are better. You know, because they have a hunger to them that, you know, it's like, man, I'm, I'm really trying to spit because, you know, we really don't have nothing to eat. And so, I mean, they bring a certain type of, of, of passion to their craft that I think is missing a lot of times than what is off, what is being offered to us. Yeah, that's, that's totally correct. I mean, you really don't know how powerful hip hop has uh, become until you leave the borders of the United States and start traveling and see the impact that it's made on just about every country you go into. I mean, uh, when I was working with Cube, uh, I was with him when he had his first tour in uh, France and went to Paris. So the place is packed. The reporters come, and they know, first of all, the audience knew all the words, all the words, and the reporters knew all the inside stuff that was going on between them and the other members of the hip hop community and other artists, and they just had all this inside information. So uh, it's just powerful, of course, in Germany, I mean, every country has, has embraced hip hop and made it their own, you know? But Africa, New Zealand, like you said, every place I've been, they've got their own hip hop movement and they know what's happening back and in the United States. surprised how popular the Bay is around the world. You know, like here, a lot of things don't get celebrated here um, because it became very narrow cast. It is like, you know, we're just going to pick one song, one E40, right, that's it, and leave it at that. But in many places around the world, um, when you tell people, you know, CJ Flash is here, he's one of the pioneers, and Nauru, you, you, you've been around the world, so you know. When you get around, you know, people in, around the country and around the world, there's a lot of respect for the Bay. Living Legends, Living Legends you talk to like uh, groups like Living Legends from here, Sunspot Jones and them, like when they, you know, you might walk down the street and just see them and be like, you know, bump into them and keep it moving. Right here in San Francisco, you can't do that in Japan. You know, you might, you, you, there'll be some bodyguards because they are popular. Michael Franny, you go to Australia, his name is up in billboards. You know, people are dying, can I please open up for Michael Franny? And people in the room is like, who's Michael Franny? He'll be at the Fox Theater tonight, you know? But I'm just saying, like, you know, the, you know Ice Life, uh, Black Alicious, of course, the pioneers of the international game here, you know, taught a lot of people. Uh, Matt Dre is huge, and it, it, he was huge before, he's even huger now. And so, um, and E-40 and all these other guys have a lot of popularity around the country, and the thing that I think people most admire about the Bay Area is willingness and its ability to be innovative and its willingness and ability to hustle. That is one thing everybody has always respected, like, yo, y'all do this stuff on your own, like, for real, like, man, you know, I need to move from New York to the Bay just to, and, and, and there have been quite a few people who have moved from New York to the Bay just to get that energy, you know, and, and soak it up and then go back and try, and, and try to apply it. You have a question back there. Uh, are you saying that to be successful Are you, are yeah, you he was asking, to, 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 in order to be successful, he was asking, do you need to advertise in other countries versus just here in the United States or in other stations? Um, the world is your stage, not just as an artist, but just in everything that you do. Um, the one regret that I've had is that for the longest time, people were telling me to, to travel overseas. And I didn't do that because I was afraid to fly, you know, long distances. And Chuck D, who's a good friend of mine from Public Enemy, told me that you need to be overseas. You need to see the world. And once I started seeing the world, you know, you get a whole other perspective that you can't really describe. And what, may, what, what will make you kind of angry is to realize that a lot of people in the United States who know better try to keep us from going to other places. You see what I'm saying? And so, as a young person, yes, you should be trying to network and talk to people in as many places as you can possibly think of. I don't care if it's Botswana, 
all the way to South Africa, to you know Palestine. I mean, the whole world is your stage. It's a big world. It's a big country. There's a lot of places to go in the United States that are off the beaten path that will make your eyes open. You'll be like, wow, I didn't know it was like that here. You know, but um, the name of the game for a lot of folks is to keep people isolated and to make them just feel like their block is the only thing, like, you know, these four corners. And I remember when I first moved out to the Bay, there were people in Oakland who hardly ever came to San Francisco. You talk to me like, nah, I've been to Frisco like a couple of years ago, you know, every once in a while I go and it's like, wow, like, and San Jose was off the map, like they didn't even go. You know, then people discovered like San Jose like three, four years ago, like, man, they got clubs here, and they got women down here, and it's like, and it's, it's all kind of stuff jumping, and it's like, Wow, like you've never been to San Jose. And people from San Jose would, would come up here like, yo, you got all these black folks up here and, and also like, wow, you know. So, and so, I mean, we got to expand our borders. And where you really find that people tend to stay locked in is when you go back east. Like, you know, I lived in New York all my life and never went to Philly. I, and now I come out here and find Philly's like an hour and a half drive. You know, to go to a whole big city. You know, so when I move, you know, when I go to New York now, I might be like, let me drive to Philly for lunch and go to DC for dinner and come back. You know, and people in New York be like, you're going all the way to Philly? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's some people that will actually take a plane. Like, I'm getting ready to go to the airport. Like, where are you going? To Philly. <laughs> or to DC, which is like a three hour drive. And you know, here in the Bay, we've driven like two hours to go to a party that ends at one and come back. Like how many, you know, some people old enough to have been like, well, I'm going to Sacramento to this party, you know, it's like two hours to get there, party ends at one and you come back, right? You know, and people in New York are like, I don't have to Philly. <sighs> Can't do it, you know, so it's a big world, you know, see it, see as much of it as you can. Get a passport, you have a passport? Yes. Yeah, start using that, yeah, use that passport. You start with Canada is a good place to go right now. Vancouver's a big city. Got a lot of things popping. Montreal is one of my favorite places. You know, a lot of places to go. Well, one of the good things about the the current climate for uh, the record industry is that the internet can go everywhere without you getting on a plane. Yeah. And the Bay Area, believe it or not, is once again, for different reasons, is in the center of the next revolution of the music industry. For a lot of reasons, the whole digital distribution of music has really been born right here. I mean, all kinds of different websites, Pandora, I mean, like a hundred different websites have been started here, which have now captured uh, you know, sort of the imagination and, and interest of people around the, around the world. And I think it's primarily a convergence of the, the, the technical companies here, you've got talent here, you've got people that really are creative, and you've got, of course, a lot of the uh, young independents here, and it's kind of fueled this use of the internet and digital distribution of music in a way that just hasn't taken place in any other locations. So yeah, if you're here, you're very fortunate. Stand up for a second now. You know, you talk about pioneers and people that know how to get their hustle on. This, you want to know how to hustle in Silicon Valley? You know, because we hustle it on, my man right there. This, this dude will break down the science for you. And, and people need to know that because a lot of times they don't see black faces. Maybe seeing Steve Jobs and all that, and that's cool. But we got our own up there that know how to build, and know how to shake and bake, and can show you a few things and apply. But everybody has to learn just to navigate their neighborhood or how to get around in, 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 in the Silicon Valley neighborhood.
And Soldier Boy was 15 when he started his thing. And I gave you the record. He's got 300, last time I checked, 315,000 people on your side of the month, about that, 20%, 10%, 20% growth. You know the second largest country? China. China. And they got money back in China. They spent a billion dollars on microtransactions on games. That's three to five, ten million. That's the wrong one. That's what the real one is. That's what Paul wants to do. So just and, and the point that I'm getting at, you know, I appreciate you sharing that, is that for folks that are coming up, this is a hustle city. This is a hustle area. This is the Bay Area has broke a lot of ground. And you gotta you you're expected to follow in those footsteps. You're expected to look and see how people have worked the angles in so many different ways. Paris is another success story. You know, there's a lot of folks that have done. Even my man, uh, CJ Flash, stand up. He was one of the first people, one of the first records that came out of the Bay Area that put on the map was Tonic Social Club. He was a part of that. Uh, but with his hustling, can you tell everybody who you was DJing for around the world? You look a little bit like him. <laughs> you look a little bit like him. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you busted me out, man. Kill it, kill it. So he's Captain and he's DJ. <laughs> but, but this is also the home of Mark Curry. This is the home of a lot of people that, that have been doing big things, you know, around, around the country. And I think folks should know. Even in New York, you know the program director for Hot 97, which is the biggest hip-hop station, is from the Bay Area. You know, you know the executive that's over at MTV that kept all the urban people going? That's Sway. You see, that's these are Oakland folks. One of my clients. Yeah. 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 So, so the point that I'm getting at is that a lot of these folks came to the table. Master P got his game not from New Orleans, but from the Bay Area. Then he brought it to New Orleans. And when you talk to people in New Orleans and down south, they will point to the Bay Area and say, we learned our stuff from the Bay. You know, so I think what happens is when you live in a place that's doing a lot, you take it for granted, and you don't necessarily follow through, or you don't really value it as much. But trust me, a lot of people are sitting up here, just like you were saying with the urban stuff, they're like, oh, how they dancing? How they talking? How they, what's they swagger like? And we're like, man, I just do this every day. And they're going, well, I'm gonna copy this, take a picture of that, I'm gonna trademark this, and then I'm gonna go find somebody who kind of looks like you, and then I'm gonna sell it back to you, and then we're like, yo, you know, I, I like the attitude here. It's like, I don't want to be on BET. I'll start BET up here. You know, and before BET, we had Soul B. You see what I'm saying? And we have Rock TV, and we have a whole lot of things. So um, this is something to keep in mind, and it's something to be proud of. And, uh, you know, even though I'm from New York, you know, I got most of my game from the Bay. You know, I'll tell people that in a minute. It's like, yeah, I'm from New York, but a lot of the hustle, I learned right here, you know, from folks around here. And, and that's a good thing. And and and. Hip-hop is about that, when you really think about it, bringing it full circle. The ability to create a way out of no way. The ability to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know, the ability to do something because it's necessary. You know, when folks were signing people, they're saying, well, you're not from LA, you're not from New York, we don't like the accent. People didn't go home and be like, well, you know, let me change up. It was like, I'm from Oakland, I'm gonna stay from Oakland, and I'm gonna start going record label and sell out the trunk of my car. Too short. I'm gonna learn the game from St. Charles and learn how to start my own distribution, E40. You know, I'm gonna take it to the next level, and people have been doing that from the high roads to the E40s, and that's something that, to me, is like, you say you're from Oakland and you're from the Bay, and a lot of places around the country, they'd be like, y'all did the damn thing, thank God. You know, y'all really figured it out. And then the next. For five to twenty-five dollars, all over the world, they get paid that because the offers are like a hundred to two hundred dollars, like a focus group. And you just say, "Look, I'm gonna give you some money. Then I'm gonna ask you, do you know anybody else who wants to buy this? And I'm gonna pay you when they buy it. Yeah. It's called turn their network into yours." <laughs> <laughs> but you, let me put them all. <laughs> 
and, but, 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 but I mean, because people talk about that, you know, what, what the town has been about. But the, the reason why the peer to peer thing, where people were willing, started stealing music in that sense, or didn't want to pay for it, was because of the greed of the record industry. What happened was, it used to be a time, like I say, artists put out albums that 20 years later, you know every song off that album. If you're old enough to know Stevie Wonder, and I tell you, tell me the songs on Key of Life, you know, there's mothers and fathers up here, I know all of them songs, right?